Hello everyone, welcome back to April Space 4.11. It's me, Tad. Yeah, you thought it was someone else. You thought it was someone else, oh. it's me, uh, Master of Disguise. Last time really... April That last Space. person you talked to, are you sure that wasn't me? Alright, I slammed Tanoni's face into the fucking floor so I can give the recap. <clears throat> that wasn't me, that was a scarecrow. Okay, well, last time on Aetheral Space, if you didn't watch for whatever reason... Yeah, um, if you just, just uh, pop it now and then, you're getting very non-linear storytelling here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most of the chapters focused around Dragon trying to escape from Roche, with Rose's help, Underman Rose, and, um... There, there was a point where, like, Rose tracked him down to the training room, and Dragon came out and was like, Oh, blah, 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 I know about Niles up in the vents. And then Niles got scared. Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, I may have to popcorn with you, Tanhoney. Okay. But we'll see. Niles gulped as she watched the blue glow of Dragon Hadrian through the walls. Was it just her imagination, or was his head angled towards her as if he could see her too? No, she shook her head. You're being paranoid. There's no way. Was there? Niles. Roche's voice came over both the communicator and the tracker she'd put on him, the mixed audio quality creating a unique duet. I already told you, boy. The name's Darren Roche. Ain't no Niles here. Oh, don't play dumb. Hadrian's voice, made crackly by the microphone, sounded cheerful. You think I couldn't figure out someone was feeding you instructions? It's nothing for me to figure out who that is and what they are, where they are, given my Aether ability. <laughs> God, he's bluffing. Niall's hands tightened against her script as she listened to Hadrian go on. What kind of ability did he have? They hadn't even known he'd had Aether until she'd spotted him with her Aether lens, so it wasn't out of the question that he had some kind of unknown tracking power, too. Wait, what had he said? It was nothing for him to figure out where she was? A chill ran down her spine. Adrian's chuckle came from the script like a death bell, low and distorted. It's kind of weird, don't you think? She hears Roche cock his rifle. You really want those to be your last words, boy? Just shoot him, she wanted to scream over the communicator. Don't let him talk, just shoot him now! But she couldn't do it. She couldn't muster the will to open her mouth and utter those words. A formless, irrational anxiety seems to hold down her tongue every time she tried. Hadrian already knew she was there. It felt like if she opened her mouth, if she engaged with the situation any further, he would suddenly be here in the vents with her. See that, guys? If you let your anxiety get the best of you, you will die during an assassination. Dragon will kill you. <clears throat> it was an absurd... <laughs> That's, that that it applies to every situation. It's not like you'll fail. It's Dragon will kill you. <laughs> yeah. Completely impossible. And yet Terra made it seem, seem nearly guaranteed. My last words? She could almost hear the frown in Hadrian's voice. But I'm still talking. I'm just saying, isn't it kind of weird how two people came in here, but now there's only me? The script slipped from Niall's shaking crip, clattering to the floor. She stared sightlessly down at it, eyes wide, turned unblinking by horror. Oh no. Just as she'd heard his frown, now she could definitely hear Hadrian's victorious grin. My friend's on their way to see you, Niles. Good luck. She didn't stay in those events for even a second after that. Dragon really hoped that bullshit had worked. Rose wasn't on her way to deal with this Niles person, of course. She didn't have Aether, for one, and she was too busy operating the holograms from the control room anyway. The script he was holding in his hand was a feint. Still useful, but not for the reason Roche would think. It was open to a communications channel, connected in a call with Rose's script, which they'd left back in the locker room. With that, just by listening in, Dragon had been able to get advance warning before his enemy had arrived. In a fight to the death, that kind of preparation time was vital. But he'd gotten much more than that. Dragon smirked. The brief snatch of conversation he'd heard through his script had formed the basis of this strategy. I'd expect nothing more, Niles, Roche had said. Locker room's clear. I'm going in. I'll keep the line open if I need you to keep tracking him. Wish me luck. From hearing that, a few things had become obvious. Roche was in contact with one of his comrades, a person called Niles, and this Niles was capable of tracking Dragon somehow. <clears throat> they hadn't hacked the security cameras. Dragon had blasted them in the molten slag the moment he'd entered the holographic suite, so it was most likely some kind of Aether ability, maybe something similar to an Aether ping. If Niles truly was tracking Dragon through his Aether, that meant whatever kind of distracting environment he created in the suite would be useless. Roche would just be able to aim right for him, no matter what he did. Therefore, the first priority was to throw Niles off enough to negate that advantage. Hopefully this little gambit of his had done that. He had no way of actually confirming it, after all. Instead, he simply spread his smile a little wider. His arms stretched out to his sides. Spark anger. Wait, what? I was saying it's T-posing for dominance. <laughs> What's Spark Anger? He's telling him what he's telling himself what to do. It's like the next step. Oh. <clears throat> oh, like get him to be angry. 
Don't suppose you'd let me go if I surrendered, would you? Roche's eye twitched. Now that Dragon got a good look at him, he was fairly intimidating. Silver armor, a huge rifle, and a bright red bandana around his forehead, barely visible behind his long brown hair. Dragon was pretty sure he'd seen a thousand guys with that exact look in trashy war videographs. The rifle he held was a concern, but the man himself not so much. Without Aether, he was pretty much an inferior version of a toy Musasi. <laughs> Roasted. Uh, I'm not taking... I'm not taking you in alive, Hadrian, Roche growled, gun aimed at him. If you want to die brave, then fight. Otherwise, I'll shoot you down here and now. What lit? Dragon dropped the script and it clattered to the ground. That was the signal. Almost instantly, before Roche could react to the sudden movement, there was the buzz of the room's hologram projectors preparing to switch images. And then everything went black. Popcorn. The room was <clears throat> flooded with shadows, like they'd both suddenly been teleported to the ocean floor. This was darkness without distinction. Not even general shapes could be made out through the haze. But Aaron Rose didn't need eyes to win. Before even a second passed, he fired his rifle in the direction Hadrian had been standing. He heard his rifle fire, felt the pulses of heat through the weapon, but what he did not hear was Hadrian going down. Worse, he didn't even see his shots fire. He had expected the bright light produced by the plasma fire would have given him a of vision at least, but seeing this darkness would not be penetrated so easily. Had he hit Hadrian? Had he killed him? Impossible to know, fumbling around for a corpse in this darkness was a fool's errand. Niles, Roche muttered, crouched low, body tense as he aimed his rifle in front of him. Where's Hadrian? I need to know. He heard Niles intake of breath through his communicator. She still had the presence of mind to do her job. But the words she was saying didn't reach his ears. They were drowned out by a blood-curdling scream, so intense it caused the armor he was wearing to vibrate. It felt as if Niles had been plunged into Roche's ears. Even, even his own gasp of pain was rendered inaudible. Back on Yoslov, Helgrade used Aether sparingly, focusing it into the most minute parts of her body at the very instant she needed it. For someone like her, an adept, that provided greater power, but for someone like Dragan, still growing experience, it was much more efficient. Aether focused inside his own body and fused into his own vocal cords, amplifying the sound of his voice until his yell became a deafening scream. He wasn't immune to the sound, his ears were ringing seconds in, and his throat felt like it had been scraped down with sandpaper, but it was all he could do to drown out Niles' instructions. He had to negate the advantages his opponent had, no matter how undignified the means. That was how Dragon Hadrian would achieve victory. Fucking horror movie monster. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Fucking I call this my Aether Rannies. Banshee. <laughs> <laughs> he just pops up in front of him like... <laughs> <laughs> Even after the oh. scream had stopped, Roach couldn't properly hear. All sounds seemed muffled as if he were listening to it for a pillow and the constant tinnitus was just as distracting as the original screech. Niles panicked speech down the communicator was nothing but noise. First, Hadrian had taken his sight, now his hearing. Anger gripped Roche's heart as he imagined the constant smug face. A warrior of the supremacy didn't need eyes to see, or ears to hear. They fought with their hearts, and with the strength of will their philosophy granted. That's just, just your strength of will can do it. Roche spun on the spot. <laughs> I can still smell you, Hadrian! <laughs> <laughs> Roche spun on the spot, pulling the trigger of his rifle as he did, so the blast of plasma flew out in all directions. Even if he couldn't see Hadrian, he'd surely get him if he destroyed everything in the immediate area. The second his barrage ended, Roche skidded to a halt, rifle raised up in front of him as he narrowed his eyes, willing himself to peer through the omnipresent darkness. His nose twitched. He could smell burning, but not burning flesh. Had he somehow missed? I, had, I actually forgot he actually does that. It's kind of weird, right? Hadrian's voice sounded out from beside him. Instantly, Roche spun around and fired again, his shot sailing away unseen. But Hadrian's speech continued unimpeded. I mean, you're meant to be some great warrior of the supremacy, but I'm beating you so easily. I mean, Roche fired another shot at the moving source of the voice. You're just spinning around and missing me every time. You're a soldier and I'm just a clerk, right? But you still can't hit me. Isn't that kind of embarrassing? I know I'd be embarrassed if I were you. Shut your mouth, Roche growled, still holding his rifle up in front of him as he tried to ascertain where exactly Hadrian's voice was coming from. He knew he could kill the brat with one shot, but getting that shot was proving more troublesome than anticipated. Huh? The word was drawn out mockingly. Shut my mouth? You really want me to stop talking so bad? I mean, what exactly will you do if I don't? You're not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed, let's be honest. It's that thing between your ears, you know? Your brain? Are you familiar? From that fucking Xbox Live trash talking dragon. 
He communicated in Roche's ear, crackled, and he realised with a start that he could hear once again. So long as Hadrian didn't pull out another one of those screams, Niles could give him the directions he needed. Where are you? Roche sniffed, tapping his communicator as he closed his eyes. They'd be useless to him in this darkness anyway. Where are you hiding here? He heard Niles' quiet intake of breath over the line. She'd heard him then, then loud, she'd heard him then, loud and clear. There was rustling, fumbling as she returned to the script. Where are you there? She whispered, I I've been trying to escape, but... Where are you, Dragon Hadrian? Roche repeated grimly, tensing his body as he prepared to move. The second he knew Hadrian's position, he had to be able to act on the information. Niles's heart, Niles heart jumped. Oh, of course that was what he wanted. Hands shaking, she brought the ether lens to her eyes, looking straight down, down through the glasses to get an idea of Hadrian's new position. You see, that last cool editing. <laughs> She'd run for quite some time after Hadrian had spooked her. But she hadn't forgotten where Roche was fighting. Tracking the enemy was her only strength, after all. She could hardly do that if she got where she needed to look. Evelyn's was the only thing she'd be allowed to take with her when she'd left home. It was her duty to master it. Her eyes adjusted quickly, sight beyond sight become available to her through the eighth infused glass. There was Hadrian, an indistinct blue glow, moving slowly as if sneaking. She glanced down at the script in her hands, cross-referencing what she could see with Roche's position. Oh. Oh no. She hurriedly brought the communicator to her mouth. More rustling, then a sharp gasp over the communicator. Roche! Now squealed, forcing the words out. Hadrian is. He's. right behind you! Hadrian whispered into Roche's oh. ears. Oh, ASMR Hadrian! <laughs> there wasn't a moment to waste on fright or surprise. Blood singing with a desire for victory. Roche spun on his heel, grabbed Hadrian by the collar, pressed the rifle against his head, and pulled the trigger. Bum bum ba and your grand died in whole space. He died. Away. He died. That's why it cut out. There's no more narration. He, he, he doesn't know what happened next because he doesn't have a brain anymore. That's the end All of the right. chapter. Sorry, Another... that was the chapter. Yeah. So Aethel's Space was a good read overall. Kind of ended a little abruptly, but you know, I guess that can't be helped. He got bad rolls. Roche was. Yeah. He <laughs> got bad rolls. <laughs> Didn't have a choice. You had to write it that way. I had to. The characters just sort of did it by themselves. I was just really writing down what happened. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys once more for listening and reading and however else you participate in Aetheral Space. I love you. <laughs> oh, wow. Flushed? If you want right, to say Honey loves you. Uh, I do. I love you guys. I'll never say this on the Discovery right. SCP because that's a different talent. That's a different person, actually. <laughs> you got a stunt double. Yeah, but I will tell you which one's the stunt of all. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Bye! Bye!